How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Ken and from my last video, we have tested out the cameras on the new iPhone 13 for video. And today I want to test out these cameras again for stills photography. Let's dive right into some camera comparison with the best full frame hybrid camera, the Sony A7 Mark III, which is what I'm using to record right now. The A7 Mark III with two lenses costs about 10,000 ringgit and the iPhone 13 at around two thirds of the price at about 3,800 ringgit. So on paper, both of these cameras have very similar yet different specs. Is this going to be a fair comparison? No, but it is going to be a lot of fun. So without wasting any more time, let's dive right in. Just before heading out, here's the breakdown lens comparison on both the iPhone 13 and the A7 Mark III. On the iPhone 13, we have two lenses, the main 26mm wide-angle lens at f1.6 aperture at 12 megapixel, and the 13mm ultra wide-angle lens at f2.4 aperture and also 12 megapixels. Whereas on the Sony A7 Mark III, I will be using a 24mm f2.8 lens from Tamron with a full 24 megapixel on the full-frame camera to give it a good comparison. As for the ultra wide end, I'll be using a fisheye 7.5mm f2.8 in APS-C mode, which is about 12mm focal length matching the ultra wide angle lens on the iPhone 13. So with all of these specs out of the way, let's dive right in. So starting off this video, we'll be taking a look at both the main and ultra wide cameras with some sample images under normal lighting as well as low light condition. Starting with the wide angle lens, here is an image of a plant in a pot from the iPhone 13 versus the A7 Mark III side by side. Can you tell which is which? I have to say that this is really difficult even for myself. The image on the right hand side is from the iPhone 13 shot on portrait mode. This is pretty insane how similar of a photo that we are getting from just the standard iPhone 13. Of course, when using portrait mode, Apple's neural engine adds in artificial bokeh, which is the background blur. And you can see artifacts of the artificial bokeh but only if you pixel peep. Here's another shot of another plant on the main wide angle lens. Can you tell which is which now? I would say that it is also pretty difficult, so the right picture is still the iPhone 13 and as expected, the artificial bokeh sort of gives it away, right? But overall, it is still a pretty good shot. And here is a normal shot on the iPhone 13 without portrait mode and you can see that it lacks the background separation look since most of the image is pretty sharp and in focus. So the portrait mode is ought to be pretty useful at times. Now onto the ultra wide lens, can you guess which is which? I would say that this is pretty easy to compare the iPhone 13's ultra wide versus the A7 Mark III using a fisheye lens. This time the shot on the left is from the iPhone 13. From this quick test, the fisheye lens on the A7 Mark III produces a very heavy fisheye effect obviously, but nothing a D-Fish filter cannot do to correct it. And this image that you are looking at right now has already have the effect turned on. Here is another shot, can you tell which is which? And you've guessed it right. The main difference is that the fish eye lens on A7 Mark III for the ultra wide angle perspective, you get to go really close to the subject as compared to the iPhone 13. Moving on to the low light condition samples, I shot some of these just under a street lamp early in the morning. As you all know, Apple has introduced night mode for low light photography by using long exposure shots since iPhone 11. The first test when comparing with the A7 Mark III, the iPhone completely crushes it as Apple is doing a really really good job at long exposure photography handheld. The iPhone 13 rendered a much more stable shot compared to the A7 Mark III. This shows that the iPhone is more of an everyday scenario where you won't necessarily bring a tripod wherever you go. Here's the shot from both the cameras on a tripod. And obviously, using a tripod, both photos came out pretty good. And lastly, in the same spot, I've also tried to do a little astrophotography pointing up towards a rather cloudy sky. And here are the results, the iPhone 13 surprisingly being able to capture a few stars, which is pretty impressive. All in all, I've got to say that there is no clear winner here. Both the iPhone 13 and the full frame mirrorless camera have functions of their own and both are good at what they are doing. If you are all in for mobile photography, then the iPhone 13 will not disappoint. You can even consider the Pro version as it has one extra telephoto lens to suit your type of shooting. And if you are considering a professional camera system with interchangeable lenses, then the full frame mirrorless camera is the way to go. And that's basically all for this week's video. If you have enjoyed this series of the new iPhone 13, be sure to be subscribed to the channel more things to be coming sometime in the future and as always if you have any questions at all feel free to leave me in the comments down below i'll be sure to get back to you guys as soon as possible as always thank you all so so much for tuning in i'll catch you all in the next video stay safe peace out and bye bye